Welcome to a 10 minute topic. I'm with Jeff Walton from the IRD and we're gonna talk about Lambeth. Uh, Jeff and I have been reporters traveling around the, the world together on many different occasions. I think I just, last time I saw you was at New Wineskins and we often talk about where we're going next. And one of our big plans was uh, going to be Lambeth this summer and I just got word and uh, you posted a story that Lambeth has been postponed. I like to say canceled, but everybody wants to say postponed. Um, it's been a busy couple weeks. Uh, the Vatican shut down, South America shut down, North America shut down, Europe. Everybody's uh, pretty much uh, gone indoors and they're, they're doing social isolation. And I got this video pop up that uh, Justin Welby has an announcement. And you, you have to go away through the video, but at about the 17 minute mark, he finally announces that Lambeth for many reasons is canceled and i thought i need to talk to somebody i don't want to bother george he's dealing with lots of church issues right now uh gavin's over uh in england dealing with lots of stuff going on there um why don't i get jeff on the program and talk about it because you are like me a fellow reporter interested in religious events they're all being can canceled yeah there's been a long string of conferences and events that were scheduled for 2020 that have been announced either canceled or postponed. Um, Lambeth was just the most recent. Um, the United Methodist General Conference was scheduled to meet in May in Minneapolis. Uh, that will be pushed back to 2021. Um, the GAFCON Bishops Gathering, uh, originally slated for Kigali, R Rwanda, uh, will also be pushed back. Uh, we don't have information on when that will take place. And um, a variety of other denominational meetings are also being uh, either canceled or pushed back. Um, so these are pretty significant things. And uh, Lambeth is uh, just the latest uh, gathering that uh, is having to uh, make significant changes due to the consequences of the coronavirus epidemic. Well, Lambeth is not just a, you don't just call the caterer mm -hmm. and uh, order a big tent. It, it's, a, it, it's a big deal to put together. Uh, isn't there a corporation or something they have that, that help, helps plan this? Yeah, while the Archbishop of Canterbury's office made the announcement, uh, the conference itself is actually put together by a body called the Lambeth Conference Company. Mm -hmm. And uh, they string together all the different arrangements that make this happen. Um, Lambeth, when it originally started in the 19th century, was named because it took place at Lambeth Palace, the Archbishop of Canterbury's uh, offices and residents. And that is uh, something that the conference quickly outgrew uh, mm -hmm. by bringing every bishop in the Anglican communion, or at least inviting all of them. Um, uh, previous Lambeth conferences have um, uh, grown in size and number as the Anglican communion grew. Um, so for quite some time, they've been meeting at the University of Kent in Canterbury. And this is a much larger venue. Um, it, takes place usually July, August timeframe. And uh, the last one that took place was in 2008. Uh, so that's what was going to be taking place this year. Um, the Archbishop of Canterbury announced that uh, this will be postponed. He emphasized not canceled. Uh, and it will take place in 2021 at about the same time. Although uh, the Lambeth uh, Conference Company has to, of course, negotiate with the various vendors and site locations in order to uh, make these new arrangements happen. Um, and I'm sure we'll be notified of that uh, as that begins to come into place. Now, this was billed as the biggest gathering of all bishops in the Anglican Church, even though the largest provinces, in my opinion, weren't going. Um, has anybody said, uh, Justin, this really isn't the largest and you don't have all the bishops of the church? Yeah, I mean, that, that would seem to be fairly obvious, but at the same time, uh, Wilby has uh, advanced this line that it would, would be the largest Lambeth conference gathering ever. Um, I was actually on uh, Twitter this week uh, uh, chatting back and forth with Kendall Harmon, uh, the canon theologian for the Diocese of South Carolina, and he made uh, the very valid point that uh, it can't be a Lambeth conference of all bishops if the largest primates are not planning on participating. Uh, so he proposed the name a, a Lambeth conference gathering rather than saying it's a conference of all bishops. Um, obviously, the uh, 
churches in uh, Nigeria, Uganda, and Rwanda have already stated that they are not going to participate. Uh, the, the primate of Kenya has stated he's not going, as have several others. Um, so uh, this was already going to be a lower rate of participation than, uh, for example, Lambeth 1998, uh, which was the last probably really big gathering. The 2008 gathering had a big boycott and was mm -hmm. absent about 200 bishops and their spouses. So um, that was probably going to take place in, in some similar fashion this year had the conference gone on where there would be a pretty big block of bishops from a substantial part of the global south who would would not be present or participating so it's going to be interesting to see all this rescheduling um i don't know if kent has openings uh next year on campus for something like this i certainly hope they do um and the bishops can put this in their schedules I certainly hope Kigali can go forward. Um, and especially the United Methodists were going to meet and discuss the finalization of their splitting. That was going to happen yeah. uh, soon, too. That, that, as you said, that's canceled? Yeah, uh, that was actually canceled before it was canceled. And what I mean by that was <laughs> people had started talking about it and saying, oh, you know, this, this conference is probably not going to take place. And then the Minneapolis Convention Center announced that they were not going to be hosting any events larger than 50 people until at least May 10th. Well, General Conference was scheduled to start there May 5th. So um, the, the, uh, the Convention Center kind of was the one that made the announcement that the conference was going to be canceled before <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, the, the um, Commission on General Conference, which is the organizing uh, body, actually made the announcement. Um, it, they're pretty certain they're going to move ahead and still do it in Minneapolis uh, the following year. And uh, it's expected that those people that had to push off their gatherings will be given priority and rescheduling. Also, for um, not just the convention center, but blocks of hotel rooms, other event venues. And um, the uh, north central jurisdiction of the United Methodist Church and the um, uh, Minnesota Annuals Conference had, uh, as host entities, uh, been preparing a lot of these things. So that'll require a lot of, of legwork. But yeah, but this has a consequence, not just for when people meet, but what policies are going to go forward. Uh, the uh, expected separation within the United Methodist Church is going to be put off another year. And uh, this is something that uh, will will have some, some consequence. Um, but uh, as I've joked with my colleague, John Lomparis, uh, he can continue to have the title elected general conference delegate john lon paris for one more year, one more year uh, because yeah. uh, he's, he still has that that role until general conference actually convenes uh, but yeah this is um something I, I think as well that is going to perhaps reshape how many of these gatherings take place as well um there are going to be things that calculations people are going to make in the future like do we want to do this in case there's another pandemic? Because what's happening now was not something people considered to be a large scale possibility before. Uh, yes, I know there were examples of uh, SARS and uh, swine flu and other instances, but they didn't result in the same degree of widespread infections and uh, cancellations that, that this has caused. So um, I think that's going to influence some decision making going forward. And, while I'm confident United Methodist General Conference will still occur and Lambeth will still occur, um, there are many other gatherings that, that may not occur uh, that have been canceled. Um, so this is something that uh, is, is a new reality or is at least within the realm of possibility much more so than it was envisioned previously. Well, I think well, there's another sad reality. reality. I'm hearing, I'm hearing myself, myself and your speaker over there. Sorry about that. Okay. okay. Maybe we'll clear up. Um, one of the sad realities is going to be who's going to make it through this. There's a lot of bishops over 55. Yeah, and you've, of course, seen the story, and many of your readers are already familiar with this, that um, a number of uh, prominent pastors and church officials have already been uh, affected by this pandemic. Um, uh, Bishop Steve Wood of the Anglican Diocese of the Carolinas is currently hospitalized. And um, he's actually in an ICU on a respirator. 
There are two other clergy members of his church staff who have also been confirmed with cases of uh, COVID-19. Um, and uh, additionally, uh, here in Washington, D.C., where I work, the very first confirmed case of coronavirus was an Episcopal rector, um, a man named uh, Timothy Cole, who is, leads Christ Episcopal Church in Georgetown. And um, he appears to have contracted the virus uh, from a conference that he was at in Louisville, Kentucky, a group called the Consortium of Endowed Episcopal Parishes. This is an annual gathering of by far the wealthiest Episcopal churches in the country. And um, that uh, had consequences here in DC. Um, uh, ultimately, we know that he was part of a breakout session that included at least six rectors who ultimately um, were diagnosed with COVID-19. And uh, when he came back to DC, uh, it was transmitted to his church organist, uh, who then um, went to perform at Virginia Theological Seminary. And that ultimately led to the shutting down of VTS uh, before many other institutions shut down. So um, we can see that church conferences and events uh, are in many cases uh, becoming vector points for the transmission of the virus. And that's why I think so many people are being very, very careful and of course, why we've seen uh, churches in the last uh, week and week and a half uh, begin moving to video conference calls, live streams, and a patchwork of other mobile technologies in order to keep connected to their congregations. All right, Jeff, we've hit ten minutes easily without too much trouble talking about everything. That's, you know, the cancel culture has nothing on COVID nineteen, uh, mm. so we. Uh, uh, certainly hate to see this happening. I uh, want to thank you for your time, Jeff, and we're signing off until you're next available. God bless. Thanks so much, Kevin.